there are two properties for the division powers exponents that we are going to discuss in this video. The first one is when we are dividing powers with the same base. This is similar to our multiplying with the same base so far as we have to have the exact same base listed more than one time. In this case we're going to subtract our exponents. And when we had, were multiplying, we were adding our exponents. So when they're in fractions, and one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, that's how we know we're dividing, and we now subtract these exponents. What you have to be very aware of is knowing what the difference is between 5 and 12, and which one is bigger. Since 12 is bigger, my variable will go up in the numerator where 12 is. If you look at the second example here, the exponent of 9 is bigger than 7, so my variable y will go in the denominator. That's the first way you should start this every time you're simplifying. Okay. Then it's a subtraction problem. 12 minus 5 is 7, so my exponent of 7 goes along with x. Here, 9 minus 7 is 2, so the exponent of 2. I never am going to input a negative exponent. So, what goes in the denominator? Well, in this case, if all I had was the base of x in top and bottom, it's a 1. Or, it's just an x to the 7th power. In this case, that 1 has to go in my numerator. Because I can't now simplify that, that's my answer. I can get rid of my fraction if 1's in my denominator not in my numerator. That y to the second must be in my denominator. The second property is the power of a quotient. Again, it's very similar to my product of a or product to a power property where I have to apply that exponent to everything in the parentheses. Same thing holds true here, except now certain things in here, like my x to the second, are in a fraction, an x to the fifth. But this exponent of 6 applies to all of it because it's applying to the parentheses. So I apply that 6 to both numerator and denominator. So that requires a second step. And that's back to our multiplication properties. This becomes x to the twelfth because I can multiply 2 times 6 when there's one base over y to the thirtieth x and y are a different base. That's not a subtraction problem. I only do that if it was x and x, or y and y, if the base was identical. Bases are different, I can't combine them. In this last example here, it's the same concept. I have x to the seventh up here, I have y to the ninth down here, except I am now applying an exponent with a variable. It doesn't change what I do. I apply that exponent to both terms. The x, I can now multiply 7 times 3z. I get 21z. Multiplication, it doesn't matter, but the variable is important there. I can bring that along. Same thing in my denominator. y to the 9 times 3z. 9 times 3 is 27, but the z comes along. x and y are different bases. So I'm done. In this particular problem set, I have six examples I want you to try. Go ahead and try first just one and two, because I want to see if we understand the basic concept before we apply it to some more complicated ones. So press pause and try numbers one and two. After you've tried those, unpause to check your answers. So for both of these, we get an a to the 10th power, because both of them have a base of a, and my exponents are 13 and 3. In both cases, 13 minus 3 is 10. It's all a matter of where do I put that variable. Because the 13, the bigger exponent is in my denominator, it becomes a denominator problem for number 1. 1 over x to the 10th. That 13 is in the numerator for number 2, so my x to the 10th goes in my numerator. It goes over 1. Since it's over 1, I can simplify that to just a to the 10th. 
hopefully we're understanding that concept because we're going to make things a little bit more complicated here in 3, 4, 5, and 6. Go ahead and try them. I will be going over 3 and 4 first, then 5 and 6. So if you want to pause and try all four, go for it. Otherwise, pause and try at least 3 and 4. Unpause when you're done with those. So for 3 and 4, we have some similarities, but some differences as well. In both cases, I have coefficients. Remember, coefficients are treated as fractions. They need to be simplified. 16 over 12 simplifies to 4 over 3. 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 goes into 12 3 times, or use your calculator and do a math frac. I treat coefficients different than exponents. In my exponents, I have x to the 10th and x to the 13th. 13 minus 10 is 3, because the x to the 13th, the bigger exponent, is in my denominator. x to the 3rd goes in my denominator. The 4 is the only thing left in my numerator. Here, I still have 2 thirds, but 2 thirds is already simplified, so it just stays as part of my solution. x to the 2nd stays in my numerator. It doesn't have a negative exponent, and I have no base in the denominator to combine it with. So I'm only combining that y to the first over y to the eighth. 8 is bigger than 1. 8 minus 1 is 7. The y goes to the denominator because the 8's bigger than 1. If you haven't done 5 and 6, please pause and try those now. For a problem like number 5, sometimes it's helpful to rewrite it and spread everything out so you can really compare what you're dealing with. Since I didn't have a coefficient in my numerator, my coefficient actually is 1. So my fraction is 1 third, it doesn't simplify. I can leave it. If you have a 1 in your numerator, great. But you don't need it there. Then I can vertically write my a terms, a to the 17th, a to the 4th, 17 is bigger, so a goes to the numerator. 17 minus 4 is 13. That's my exponent. My b terms are written vertically. 11 is bigger than 8, so b goes to the denominator. 11 minus 8 is 3. My exponent becomes 3. Again, I put variables in my numerator, so don't be intimidated by it. It's still a subtraction problem. 7 is bigger than 2, so my a goes to the denominator. 7x minus 2x is 5x. That becomes my exponent. Go ahead and try the Canvas quiz regarding division properties of exponents, and if you're still struggling, please come in and see me.